Hi, and welcome back to the Jurassic Jungle, our journey of the renovation extension of our 50-year-old bungalow down here in Dorset. Um, so I'm going to be doing a series of videos about uh, retrofitting of underfloor heating uh, the hard way, which is what we've been doing here, certainly. Um, and in particular on this one, uh, the savings that we've made by recycling um, waste material on site rather than getting that taken away and, and buying new material uh, for the build. So we, there are a number of choices you can have with underfloor heating uh, as a retrofit. So some that can go on the existing floor covering, um, but obviously you've got, you're raising the floor height with that sort of solution. Um, we had suspended floors here, so wooden, wooden joists with uh, uh, chipboard um, and some uh, solid wood flooring over the top. Um, and the simplest method would have been to take that flooring out, add insulation between the joists, uh, then put metal spreader pates with the, the pipes over the top. Um, that would have certainly been the, the simplest, fastest way of doing it. Um, but it's probably not as effective in the insulation, you know, because you're forcing that between the joists. It's not certainly not airtight or difficult to get it airtight. Um, and you haven't got much of a heat mass, uh, which, which we really want to, to have working with our air source heat pump. So we've gone for a, a full fill uh, build up of the floor. So filling the void that we had underneath the floor, um, then an os concrete oversight, then insulation, then the screed with the pipes in it, um, which we think will be the most efficient and most effective build, but it's, it's harder work. So the challenge we had here, we had about a 50 um, centimeter, 500 millimeter void uh, below the floorboards and an area of probably something like 80 square meters that we needed to fill. Um, so, so, you know, a, a, a lot of hardcore to fill that space. But at the same time, we've demolished quite a lot of the previous buildings. So we took down a garage, we took down a porch, utility room, a number of the internal walls um, have gone and some of the external walls where we opened up a quarter of the house into a large open plan living space. So we were generating a, a lot of rubbish. And uh, skips and muck away lorries are increasingly expensive. I think we're about 310 pounds plus VAT here, so 370 pounds or so uh, for, I think you get about 10 or 12 tons in one of those grab lorries. Um, so we decided to recycle on site. I did the basic maths of that and that seemed to make sense and I think it's panned out. I haven't got all of the costs through yet, but certainly made quite a significant saving by doing that. So we uh, hired a crusher that was on site for a couple of days. Uh, that came with an operator and also with a bigger excavator that was able to move all of the hardcore. So um, Alison and I helped with the wheelbarrowing and raking of all of that material out. Um, we had uh, three of the builders that we normally have on site helping for some of that time, um, operating the excavator, um, wheelbarrowing the material around to fill the space that you see behind me. and. Uh, we've worked out roughly, we've put about 70 tonnes of scalpings, uh, of recycled scalpings under the floor here, and we've got probably another 20 or 30 tonnes outside. So we recycled pretty much close to 100 tonnes of uh, hardcore, so bricks, blocks, paving slabs, roof tiles as we replaced the whole roof. Um, and, you know, if you look at the costs that that would have been, uh, normally I, I, that would probably have taken, yeah, potentially 10 um, muckaway lorries at 350 pounds a time or so, so you know three and a half thousand pounds for muckaway. Um, we then have had to buy the scalpings back in. Um, obviously, that's cheaper if you get them loose, but still probably you know 1,500 pounds or so for the scalpings we would have needed uh, for the for the floor. So a uh, potential cost of sort of four or five thousand pounds. Um, so what did it work out for us to to do that work here? Um, so it's about 350 pounds plus VAT a day for the machine, a few other costs and delivery and things like that. So just over a thousand pounds for the equipment and one operative and um, labor for the builders for the time that they were helping. Um, so I would say those costs overall would be, you know, 1500 to 2000 pounds in total. So pretty significant saving of 2000 pounds to do that up to potentially 5000 pounds to get rid of all of the old material and buy material back in to do the floor build up that we're doing. So really quite pleased with how that's worked. You know, it's it's more environmentally friendly to to do that as well. You know, we're not putting stuff in landfill. Um, 
we're, we're reusing it on site so we're trying to do that and i've tried to save you know as much of the material as well that i can so we've kept all of the joists that uh, we can use potentially for projects in the garden and, and other things in the future so i'll be going through a, a series of videos around the underfloor heating uh, project that we've got here as i say we've got this sort of 350 400 millimeters of scalpings that have gone in we're just starting to do the uh, thin layer of uh, sand uh, to blind that before we put the uh, uh, damp proof membrane over the top uh, tuesday wednesday this week we're hoping to have then 100 millimeters of uh, concrete oversight um, once that's dry we have 100 millimeters of pir insulation uh, then the underfloor heating will be clipped to that and around 50 millimetres of liquid screed. So really happy with how that's all moving forward and I'll give you updates around the project and how we go through that um, as the project moves forward. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I've mentioned we're really pleased that we managed to get uh, working with a single contractor for the air source heat pump, the underfloor heating and all the domestic hot water. So they've already done some of the first fix for the water that we need that we're coming back and doing the air source heat pump and underfloor heating over the coming weeks um, once we've got the place watertight. So um, great news on that is we've got windows being delivered starting at the back end of this week. We're just coming into early October. Um, so most of the windows will be installed uh, at the end of this week going into next week. Uh, we've got to wait on a couple. The glass gable end for the open source room and our front door won't be here unfortunately till early November. Um, but you know things are moving forward well with that. Uh, the other great news with the air source heat pump, some of you may have seen that the government have increased the uh, grants that are available from £5,000 to £7,500 and because our heat pump hasn't been installed yet we're able to switch to that new higher grant. So the supply and installation of the air source heat pump and the water tank um, I think is now going to cost us about £1,500. So, um, I'll go into some more detail of that when all of that's finalised, but we were very lucky to get some uh, price matching that was available in the market as well as the grants to make that a very efficient uh, project to move with the air source heat pump. So really, really pleased uh, with the way that that's going. Um, I did add a bit of cost on that. I think it was about £800 to have some insulated pipe work put underneath the garage floor. Uh, but that's meant that we don't have large insulated pipes going all around the garage walls and then trunking and then that the like uh, down the outside of the house so you know aesthetically it will uh, look really good as well so um, I'll, as I say I have a series of videos covering what we're doing with underfloor heating uh, I've captured um, a little bit of, um, of still uh, of, of uh, uh, animated film that I'll show you now so you can have a look at some of the crushing work in operation and us laying the floor over the last couple of days hard work but actually quite a lot of fun so thank you so much for all of you that have been uh, subscribing to my videos. I think we've just hit 140 subscribers and over 2,000 views on, on some of the videos I've done around things like Part L. Um, really dry subject, but lots of people are interested in it. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Take a look at the other videos if you haven't and click like on this video. Thank you so much for your time.